So now that we're into the final content patch of the Burning Crusade, a lot of us are using this patch to do our prep work for Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And that includes an awful lot of gold making. But just how much do you need to do? Well, in today's video, I was hoping to give you all a breakdown of what I think are the crucial purchases that we're all going to need to make when Wrath of the Lich King comes in order of importance and how much gold it's going to cost you per character to be able to make these purchases. Just before I do, I would like to thank my Patreons, as always, throwing them up on the screen for you guys now. And I am incredibly grateful to you guys, and thank you very much for supporting the channel. But now, let's dive into it with the first purchase of note that you are going to be making. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Jewel Talent Spec, and this is because of the fact that not only is it one of the cheaper things that we're going to discuss, not only is it one of the most important things that we're going to discuss, but it's also probably going to be the first thing that we can purchase. I do expect Jewel and Talent Spec to drop in the TBC into Wrath of the Lich King pre-patch, which means that this is probably going to be available a few weeks before anything else that we're going to discuss. Now, Jewel Talent Spec is going to be incredibly helpful for pretty much any character moving into the Wrath of the Lich King, allowing you to have, say for example, a PvP spec and a PvE spec, or having a dungeoning spec and a questing spec, and this obviously just opens up a lot of options for a lot of people, and it is ultimately going to save a lot of gold in the long run comparative to re-speaking all of the time. Now, this is something that you're going to learn from your class trainer, and it's going to cost you 1,000 gold on any given character. Unlike a lot of the things that we're going to discuss, there is no reputation price reduction that you can achieve for buying jewel spec. So it is very simply 1,000 gold per character that you want to have this functionality, like I said, I do expect this to drop in the pre-patch and it is going to be available to any character that is over level 40. So bear that in mind for how many thousand gold increments you're going to need per the amount of characters that you wish to have this feature on. So the next one that I wanted to talk about is going to be Cold Weather Flying. Now Cold Weather Flying is highly likely going to be the next purchase of note that you make during Wrath of the Lich King, once again costing 1000 gold. This one, however, is not going to be available in the pre-patch. It is going to be something that you are going to be able to get at level 77, so most of the way through the leveling process towards the new max level in Wrath of the Lich King. However, it is what's going to enable you to be able to fly in Northrend. I don't think I need to explain a great deal as to why this is so important, with a great many of the areas of the Northrend zone not being accessible until you are able to fly, unless, of course, you go and visit the vendor that gives you the temporary flying mount. But... With that being said, I think that this is going to be a must-have for all characters that actually want to take part in any content in the Northrend zones. So you are going to be looking to spend that 1,000 gold per character. Now, one thing that is worth mentioning here is that depending on where Blizzards go with regards to the patch that we are going to have at any given phase, there will be a Tome of Cold Weather Flying that will be an heirloom item that you'll be able to purchase for your alts. It's still going to be 1,000 gold, but it does mean that you will be able to give your flying capabilities to any alt that is level 68 or above, not having to wait till 77 like you will with your first character. Like I say, it's still going to cost that 1,000 gold, so for those of you that are keeping a running tally, we're now up to 2,000 gold per character that you wish to have these features. Next up, we're taking a very big step up in terms of the money involved now, moving into the Ring of the Kirin Tor. Now, the Ring of the Kirin Tor is a decent item in terms of the itemization that is on it for when you first hit level 80, so it is going to be a useful piece of gear to be purchasing for that reason. However, the main reason that we're going to be buying this ring is for the fact that it is going to have a teleport to Dalaran functionality. This is going to allow you, if you should so desire, to set your hearthstone somewhere else where you farm or maybe at the raid that you're doing at the time, and then be able to still get back to Dalaran very easily. This is going to be incredibly great for quality of life, except for, of course for those of you who are playing a mage who can pretty much discount this section and save yourself the whopping eight and a half thousand gold that this ring is going to cost. Now, I've put this at this point in the list because not only is it very expensive and it is going to require you be at level 80, but it is also very much a quality of life feature. So it's not something that is going to be required as such, but it is going to be something that I imagine will be very helpful and certainly on a lot of people's shopping list. Now, unlike the two previous items, 
this one is subject to the discounts that you get for getting your reputation up. The reputation in question is for the Kirin Tor, the Mages of Dalaran, and if you get it up to Exalted, you can actually get this ring as cheap as 6,800 gold, which is quite a substantial saving, meaning that you can get, in principle, this ring and all the two aforementioned items that we've discussed for a total of 8,800, which is not all that bad. At least when you compare it to the price of the final item that we are going to discuss just now. So, the final item that we're going to discuss is the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. Yes, that's right. We finally get access to a mount with a vendor on it. Now, obviously, this is again going to be a quality of life thing that a lot of us are going to want. However, that quality of life is going to be mitigated by the amount of life you're going to have to sacrifice to be able to grind the whopping 20,000 gold default price for this mount or 16,000 gold with reputation discounts. Now, it's important to remember that this mount is not going to be account wide. So you are going to want this per character, once again, like everything else that you are going to want to be purchasing from the aforementioned items in this list, meaning that this could get very expensive for all of you altaholics like me. One small blessing, however, is that that reputation discount that of course you're going to want to grind out before you make this purchase is for the Kirin Tor just the same as the ring, meaning that once you've ground out the reputation for one, you will have the discount for both. But that's the last mentioning that we're going to have for any given individual item. For anyone who is curious, I haven't discussed certain things that are going to be fluctuating in price by realm or whereabouts you're going to do it. Most notably, the one that sprung to mind was people who are looking for a rough estimate of the amount of gold required to compete for their realm first titles for their profession maxing out. And that is because of obviously the fact that that is such a wildly fluctuating thing by realm to be able to try and predict, as well as also, if I'm being really honest with you, the capacity to achieve that realm first is going to be so minimal that if you're currently doing your research for it now and not a year ago, chances are there is someone who's already got a full set of items to craft for their TBC recipes that are going to get them skill ups all the way up to very close to the cap already, as well as probably having already pre-arranged for guildies to funnel items into them. And it's just not realistic to try and compete by purchasing everything on the auction house. And that's if you can even get ahead of those people who've probably set up accounts to purchase those items the moment they go up just the same. But now, for those of you who haven't been counting along, how much does this mean we're going to need, in quotations there, for every given character that is going to be taking part in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion on our accounts? And it's going to come out at 24,800 when you consider the reputation discounts, which of course are basically mandatory unless you intend on just throwing money at this. That's a lot of gold, but the good news is Wrath of the Lich King is not right around the corner. It is actually still a few months away, so you do have quite a while to be grinding out this gold, but it's probably a good time to get started on it. If you are not sure on the best way to go about doing this, I do have many gold guides on the channel, so please do consider checking them out. They may be able to help you reach this absolutely absurd figure before launch. But do bear in mind as well that these are not all items that you are going to require the moment that we get into Wrath of the Lich King. In fact, two of them aren't even going to be purchasable until level 80, so really not worth stressing out about. But you are definitely at least going to want at least the 2000 per character that we mentioned for dual spec and cold weather flying. But for now, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do consider a like on this video because it does help the channel a great deal. And I hope to see you in the next one. Laters.